This is a one of a kind battle. Three unknown chefs. Chefs. I'm just a private chef, but winning this takes me to the next level. Compete over two rounds. Your time starts now. Their goal? To impress one culinary master. I'm trying to impress you. I appreciate that. Your chicken got hammered a little bit. Yeah. Tonight, it's the legendary master, Eric Greenspan. Master Eric is the best, and it's very intimidating. I feel like you're BSing me a little bit. At stake, the opportunity of a lifetime, an apprenticeship with the master. To work with Master Eric would take me as a chef to the next level. The master will hand select only one chef. Chef, careful you don't burn this fish. And for the first time ever, the judge will come out from behind the table. Because to win this chance of a lifetime, they'll have to beat the master first. You've got to be kidding me. This is man versus master. Chef battle. Tonight's master proves that a chef can find success following their passions. Classically trained under following their passions. Classically trained under master French chef Alain Ducasse, this master's culinary style runs the gamut. From his critically acclaimed Mare to his fan favorite grilled cheese restaurant. Tonight's master is the always endearing and quite talented master Eric Greenspan. Chef Blaze. Master Green. Good to see you. Eric Greenspan was really clued in at the beginning of the fast casual movement, and now it's a movement that has taken over the entire country. Eric Greenspan, you name a level of cooking and he can bring it. My philosophy on food is it's about a full sensual experience. It's about taste, smell, sights, immersion in kind of all of the senses. I always tell cooks, don't chase the money, chase the experience. And the only way that you can achieve greatness is by working for greatness. How's it going, guys? Great, how are really you? Really good. So, Master Eric, what inspired your signature style? I've trained with some of the best chefs in the world. David Boulay, Alain Ducasse, Fran Adriano El Bouli. And all of these people, I've taken a little something from each one of them to kind of create my own culinary voice. All right, Master Greenspan is happy to be here, and you know all about him. Now it's time for you to tell him a little bit about yourselves. Brian Rowe from Bethesda, Maryland. I've been cooking for 18 years. I grew up in the kitchen. My family owned restaurants, so I spent more time in a restaurant than I did at my house. Nice. I'm Chef Karina Lampkin. Um, I founded Blackbird Kitchen in 2012, and I just sold my shares to my partners last week. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, because I'm ready to come and work for you. <laughs> my name is Chef Kevin Levine. I'm the executive chef of Scatori's Pizza and Italian Restaurant, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I love to play with food, taking risks. What's the riskiest risk you've ever taken in the kitchen? Uh, Chocolate-covered shrimp at a dessert bar. Oh. So, yeah. I mean, it was pretty cool. Chef Brian, Karina, and Kevin, tonight you're competing for the opportunity of a lifetime, the chance to stage with your idol. Now, as you know, a stage in the culinary world is an apprenticeship and the chance to learn from a true master. Chefs, the rules are simple. Over two rounds, you're going to compete against each other. If you lose, you go home. But only one of you will be hand-selected by the master and be deemed worthy of his mentoring. But here's the catch. If the master selects you, you'll have to go head to head against him. To win the stage, you must beat the master. A master's signature dish is one that reflects their personal style. These are the dishes that made them a master. Under this cloche is a dish that quite simply made Eric Greenspan famous when he won the 2008 Grilled Cheese Invitational. Tonight's signature dish is raisin bread and Telegio grilled cheese sandwich, apricot caper puree, oven dried tomatoes, arugula, and braised beef short ribs. So tonight, we want you to show us your inspiration as you make a dish that's going to wow Master Greenspan using short rib. Short rib. 
They thought they were making cheese you sandwiches, thought, you didn't they? You were totally thinking cheese. That's what they thought. I was thinking. I was thinking that, too. You are a bad man, Richard Blaze. So, Master Eric, what is it about short ribs that you love? I mean, I, I love short ribs because it takes to the flavor of how it's cooked so well. It can go highbrow, but at the end of the day, it's a peasant cut. It's meant to please the soul. You have 45 minutes to create a dish that features short rib. When your cook time is over, Master Eric will decide which two chefs move along in the competition. Your time starts now. 45 minutes, not a lot of time. You got to cook it. Right yeah, you got to get moving, Chop it up man. small. I mean, what, how, what would you do in 45 minutes? To be honest with you, in this environment, I would probably, I would go pressure cook, but I would have a backup plan. Of course. So if it didn't work, mm -hmm. I had something else. I am going to do a cold preparation because I don't think anyone else is thinking about doing that. A carpaccio is a raw preparation. Very, very thinly sliced meat, and then usually something else on the plate to kind of elevate the meat that's on the plate. I started in the kitchen uh, really young. My family owned restaurants in Annapolis, Maryland. It was a seafood restaurant. It was very, you know, very touristy, but not very challenging. I finally figured out around 18 or 19 that I wanted to be a real chef. I've yet to achieve the level of cooking that I'd like to achieve. I want to win a stage with Master Greenspan because I think that I would learn to hold myself and carry myself as a master chef. So the slicer got me excited, but if that's where we're going with that. That's my um, fear. It's like, is it going to be cooked into a sandwich or, or, or cooked into I mean, anything? If it's like, going to be cooked, because if it's carpaccio, then it has to be razor thin. I'm using this uh, a thicker steak because I'm going to make a beautiful succotash. I'm going to set that right on top, and I'm going to do a surf and turf. I'm going to really nicely sear a scallop, put that on top. I'm browning my short rib before I put them in the pressure cooker because there is just not enough time to get a three-hour braise done in 45 minutes. I'm currently leaving my restaurant that I founded. I poured my whole heart into this restaurant, and I got a great business education. But the operational stress really hampered my creativity. And so my plan is to explore my creative voice and find some new mentors and find some inspiration and start all over. On Karina Station, there's a lot that. going on, and that pressure cooker is going to be the key. You can't see inside of it, so until she opens it up, you, you don't, don't know, know what you got you in there. Do you have enough liquid? Is it burnt? Is it cooked at all? Is it too much liquid? God, I just hate don't that know. anxiety. I am going to be making a uh, short rib gravy and risotto. And the gravy will begin shortly. After graduating culinary school, my father passed away. I was extremely close to my father. I went up to visit him in the hospital, and he said, there's my chef. I talked to him, and that was, that was the last words he said to me. So it just stuck in me. So I have it on my arm is why I'm going to win and continue making them proud every single day. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Uh, oh, short rib gravy. I love the word gravy. Do we share that affinity for the word gravy? Uh, yeah. uh, yes. Not just the word, actually, but the, uh, <laughs> the actual. But yeah. the stuff. The stuff. Yeah. <laughs> going to do a little fig balsamic and turbinated sugar reduction. While my balsamic's reducing, I'm going to start on my pickled mushrooms, fresnos, and onions. I have to choose my ingredients really carefully to get as much flavor on this plate with the carpaccio as possible without overwhelming everything else. So I'm going to pickle the Fresnos, red onions, and chanterelles in a little bit of champagne vinegar. This guy's super chill. Um, he's moving at a snail's pace. <laughs> hey, Kevin. Yes. What are you doing over there? I'm doing short rib gravy. Of course you are. Because gravy comes from the heart, baby. Does, does. What you doing over there? Making sexy food. Yeah. What's your gut tell you? Well, half tells me I'm an idiot. The other half way tells me I'm brilliant. So we'll see what happens. You boys are in trouble. Big trouble. Snap. I'm going to serve my short rib with a seared scallop on a summer succotash. A succotash is Primarily like a vegetable melody with uh, being corn forward and so easy, so delicious. And you know, it's gonna take me home for the win. All right, so right now I have a little beef and chicken stock. That's going to be for my risotto. I cook risotto every single day. I'm gonna blow chef away with that. For my garnish, I'm gonna take roasted red peppers. I'm gonna put them in the food processor and I'm gonna make a coolie out of it. I'm gonna let that reduce, bring out all of the uh, liquid in it. So when I paint it on the plate, It'll just stay right there. 
Brian, how are you doing? You seem incredibly calm over here. What is the dish you're making? I'm going to do a cold preparation, a little short rib carpaccio. Short rib carpaccio. Never really seen anybody do it. I figure I'd shave it really, really thin to play off the fat, the rich. It just doesn't look like there's a lot going on here, Chef. There's not, there's not. But I think that if I put enough flavors on it and I right. do it the right way, I think it's going to come through what I'm okay, trying to show. Uh, Master Greenspan loves big flavors, so good luck. Gotcha. Thank you, Chef. I think it's very important to show Master Eric that I'm very creative and that I can think outside the box. That's why I'm going to go so far outside the box with this first dish. OK, so Chef Karina, yeah. what is going on in the pressure cooker? In there, we have a chicken stock. Threw some fennel in there to clean up the flavor. OK. Some porcini mushroom. Wow, to, OK. You know, give it sure. the, the yeah. earthy flavor. All right. And we're hoping it's done in time. Hey, uh, Master Greenspan, what are your thoughts on pressure cookers? The concern is that it is if it's in there long enough. At this point, ain't no turning back. So no. she's just going to have to keep pushing ahead. 17 minutes remaining. Uh, that's not a lot of time. Good luck. Thank you. Chef Kevin, so what's going on over here? Oh All my right. God, are you making risotto? Yes. Okay. So I'm That's... doing a little borsan cheese risotto. And this is a dish you've made before? Uh, not all of it combined. Hey, Master Eric Greenspan. Yes, sir. We're making risotto with a French creamy cheese. W uh, interesting. And then we're making a short rib gravy to serve with that risotto. Texturally, that sounds, sounds bushy. I got a thing of something. If it's not done right, I'm going to be going home. The concerns about texture in my dish, you know what? I'm going to fry it. That way, I'll have something crunchy on the plate. But hey, I'm frying the risotto. You're going to fry the risotto, too? OK, time just flies here. Good luck. I have five minutes left, and I need to cool down my risotto so I can form it into cakes. Then I've got to bread it and fry it. And now I'm running out of time. This is a train wreck. When I sear my scallop, it's heavy salt, like all the rest of my proteins. I throw that down in a very, very hot pan that I know is going to impress Master Greenspan. It's probably about as good as it's going to get without actually freezing. The first slice, it's not right. It's too thick. It's not good. So now I just got to go through here and figure out which pieces I want to use. You saw I, just, I did a lot, pretty much everything I had. All right, so right now I'm getting ready to make my risotto cake. So I'm basically flour, egg, panko. And for garnish, I'm going to take some microgreens, uh, flash fry them for crispness, and place them right on top. Got two and a half minutes. This is the first impression that I wanted to make with Master Eric. Yum. Got a beautiful dish that's perfectly composed and visually stunning. I was just thinking about the plating, you know? I feel like I have enough time because I did something cold that I should make sure the plating's sexy. Plus, I'm kind of a perfectionist, you know? This is going to impress Master Greenspan because I'm pretty sure no one's ever done this before. Hit it with a little bit of the smoked salt. Perfect. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop cooking, grab your plates, head on over to the table. I definitely think that there's a few more components that I could have added to this plate that would have elevated farther than what it is. But overall, I'm happy with what I've put out. Master Eric is definitely somebody who I look up to and whose opinion I really value. All right, well, the story begins. Chef Brian, tell us about your dish. So I decided to do a short rib carpaccio um, with some pickled chanterelle mushrooms, red onions, fresnos, a little bourbon smoked salt, and some micro celery. Pickled mushrooms is a nice touch. I love the heat of the chili. The smoked salt was a delicate touch, and, and, and I was not expecting that. Thank you, Chef. Tell me about the use of short rib. Why did you choose carpaccio? Well, honestly, there's a pressure cooker. Uh, I don't think that's a true braise. I love the rich and the fattiness. And when I tasted that, it just melted on my tongue. I was like, that's, that's what I want to do with it. It just melted on your tongue. Yeah. I just kind of feel like you're BSing me a little bit. There's a reason why people haven't done carpaccio of short ribs before, because it's chewy as all hell. You didn't take a piece and put it in your mouth and it melted in your mouth, because this doesn't melt in your mouth, right? This was such a stupid move. I just really hope that Master Eric appreciates that I went outside the box. Chef Karina, tell us about your dish. OK. Braised short rib, which we did um, in the pressure cooker. 
I'm a seafood chef, so I had to tie in my story, which would be the seared scallop. And underneath it, summer succotash, some fresh summer corn, heirloom tomatoes. I smoked those to try to lend some more depth and complexity to the dish. You went to work. The braising of the short rib was, I think, kind of necessary, but still bold, because you don't see it until it comes out. And you don't get the test to see if it's ready or not. And if it ain't ready, you blew it. Was it ready? It was ready. Cool. It's a little busy. And to me, the scallop seemed like you forced it. You did a lot. I did. Well, I'm trying to impress you, you know. I appreciate I'm that. I'm a big fan. I appreciate that. You too. Thank you. No one's been a fan of me so far. So That's I, not I'm true. a huge fan of you. Thank you for finally admitting it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I disagree with him that the scallop didn't fit, but I know that I nailed it because he inhaled the entire short rib. I'm feeling very confident that this is in the bag. And Chef Kevin, what about your dish? Today I made for you a deep fried panko crusted herb and garlic cheese risotto cake with uh, short rib gravy, drizzled with a little roasted red pepper reduction. When you started this, were you planning on doing the rice uh, risotto cake? Absolutely. You were? 100%. You lied to me? Not one bit. What am I going to do? It's extremely important to stand by your food no matter what you do. I, I actually would have thought it would have been a great audible. To me, I almost would have been more impressive because I, I, I love to hear that somebody's got, you know, can take feedback. If frying was the, was, was the right move. I just, for some reason, I thought that, that it was an on-the-fly call and a great one. Um, how is this gravy? To me, it's, it's more of a ragu and not the best use of short ribs, I would say. It didn't make the short ribs the star of the dish. They could have been cut more precise. It could have been ground, something done to kind of tender it because 45 minutes outside of a pressure cooker mm -hmm. is not enough time to cook a short rib at all. This is not going as planned. I am screwed. All right, well, Master Greenspan, as you know, only two chefs can move forward. I'm sure this is a difficult decision, but who's the first chef to advance? So the first chef that's moving forward is Karina. Thank you. Karina, at the end of the day, you, it was a well-composed dish. Thank it you. was delicious. The short rib was treated with the respect that it deserved. I'd be remiss not to move you forward. Awesome. This round was an easy win for me, and I'm pretty confident that everybody else is going home. Well, congratulations, Chef Karina. You'll be moving forward to the next round. Chef Brian, Chef Kevin, as you know, only one of you can advance. So, Master Eric, who's the next chef moving forward? Both of these executions of the short rib were not the finest of choices. I know I'm there with flavor and passion, but the pressure's building. Am I going home? Am I staying? What's going on? Chef Brian, Chef Kevin, as you know, only one of you can advance. Master Eric, who's the next chef moving forward? The next chef moving forward is... Kevin. Oh, my god. I made it through. Thank you. Round two. I'm one step closer to being an apprentice for Master Eric. Brian, watching you cook, to me, was frustrating because I didn't see any fire at all. I just hope that in the future, you put forth the most effort that you can every time you do something. Unfortunately, Chef Brian, that means your time with our master has come to an end. Chef, thank Brian, you very much. Good luck. Chef. I'm very thankful for the opportunity to have cooked in front of Master Eric. I know that I'm not a bad chef. There's just a lot that I think I need to learn. If I could go back, I would put those short ribs in a pressure cooker. All right, well, congratulations, Chef Karina, Chef Kevin. You're one step closer to the opportunity of a lifetime. So step up your game and head back to the kitchen. Now that I made it through and it's only Chef Karina and I, I got to up my annies. She's extremely talented. She knows what she's doing, so I got to push myself even more. Well, you've proven that you know how to cook, but for this next round, you'll have to work on something that masters take years to perfect, technique. In this round, Master Eric will be joining you as you cook, and he'll be observing and questioning you, so you'll have to be on your toes. I want to play with this guy so bad, so hover over me, breathe down my neck, whatever it is, just pay attention to me, because I want to be your homie, Master Eric. 
So tonight, Master Eric wants you to utilize a cooking technique that creates one of his favorite things in the world. Tonight's technique is? Creating crispy fish skin. Crispy fish skin is hard to achieve because different fish take different techniques. Different skins have different amount of humidity, have amount of different fat contents, and you have to worry about not overcooking the fish while getting the skin crispy. Uh, and there's a difference between crispy and burnt. So chefs, don't fish the bed. Ah! What will you be judging upon, chef? To me, what's going to be very important is not just the crispy skin technique, but how you handle the fish is going to be of the utmost importance. All right, chef, so you have 30 minutes to make a dish that features crispy fish skin. Your time starts now. This is a difficult challenge. Look, I know Karina's got some experience with seafood, but sometimes that confidence carries you too far. I've never really cooked solely crispy fish skin, but I cook perfect fish, so I'm not really too concerned. I am making a cheesy polenta with a Cajun uh, seared salmon. I want to top everything with a Creole cream sauce. Easy, flavorful, there it is. What do you got going on over there, Boo? Uh, I'm going to do a little salmon and polenta. I'm going to rock a salmon, too, just so I can do it about 10 times better than him. Let the world know. I am making a seared wild king salmon with a sous vide, summer veg, chili oil, and basil oil. Going up against Chef Kevin, I know that I have a competitive advantage because I owned a seafood restaurant, and if I don't nail a crispy fish skin, I'm going to be very embarrassed. How you doing, Chef? I'm all right. How are you, Chef? I'm well. Oh, interesting. You're scoring the salmon. I've never seen that before. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. You don't really need to do that. It's a nice, thick piece of fish. OK, thanks. Uh, well, yeah. That's why I'm here. I want to learn how to do your I get chef. it. I get it. <laughs> when a master chef tells you you should probably cook that salmon a different way, my only answer is a oh, wee oui, chef. What's up, Kevin? What do you, oh, you want salmon? I want salmon. Why? Uh, I can cook a perfect medium rare salmon. Right. Uh, I'm going to do a fresh corn and white cheddar polenta with a fish little. Fish and cheese. Fish and cheese. Interesting. You know the typical rules, right? Not to do it? Not to do it. Yes, sir. They teach you in culinary school not to add cheese and fish in the same dish. Two fatty items. But you know what? I've perfected this. I know this works. Listen, Salmon, you don't know this yet, but it's a really big deal that you come out crispy. Talking to the fish? Yeah. It's important. There's really only one way to sear a fish perfectly. You start with a hot, hot pan, a lot of oil, and you want to get it to right before the smoking point. And I pop those in the oven, and then that's just going to create a crusty skin that's just to die for. Woo! Chefs, only 12 minutes and 30 seconds remain. I'm grabbing Cajun seasoning for my salmon. That'll add a nice element of blackness to the fish. The trickiest part about this task is making sure the skin is crispy without overcooking the protein. I'm going to do a little roasted red pepper and arugula garnish. Get a little earthiness going into it. I have a lot of creaminess going on in this dish, so my whole thought process is to bring it all together with arugula salad. What do you got there? A little bacon. For what? Maple bacon drizzle for the arugula salad. Just enough for a little sweetness. I need to win this apprenticeship so we can take Scatorius to the next level. I have a lot to prove because my girlfriend's parents came out of retirement and they put all of their trust into myself and her to open up Scatorius. And to be able to repay them would mean the world to me. This is a chili oil, and I'm going to make a basil oil. Because we don't have a lot of time, I'd like to get as much art and color into the dish as possible. When I was younger and my grandparents wanted to pay tuition for college, you know, I said, OK, great. I want to go to culinary school. And they said, not that kind of college. And that was frustrating for me. But to me, being a chef is completely like being an artist. And I'm working to blend my craft with art and bring them both together in a union. Chefs, just over seven minutes remain. Only seven minutes. I look at my fish, and I realize the skin might be burnt. You might want to turn it down, man. 
at this point. I mean, because you might, you yeah. still got seven minutes. That's going to carry. Yeah. That's going to carry. Ugh, can't believe this just happened. I took this crispy fish skin a little too far, and it went from crispiness to burnt. Let it come to temp. I know my skin is burnt, but I have a beautifully cooked piece of salmon. I know Chef's going to like it. I'm going to place my salad on top of the skin. Hopefully, he won't notice. Uh, we're just going to do a quick sear. On these veg, it only needs to cook for a couple minutes. We're heading up on two minutes remaining. Critty, you got to check your fish, because if it's not right, you got to make it right in two minutes, right? Those are done. Unfortunately, I left it in the oven a little too long, and the fish did overcook. But I continued to baste it anyway, because I wanted all those essential oils and the butter on there, because that's just that's really what tastes good. See that? That's albumin. That's when the fish is starting to overcook. I would stop basting. Right now. To lose a seafood challenge as a seafood chef would be very embarrassing. But it looks like Chef Kevin's skin is toast. So I'm feeling very confident that I won this round. 20 seconds left. It all comes down to this, the opportunity of a lifetime. Looks pretty to me. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, ha, ha. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop cooking, grab your plates, head on over to the table. I'm feeling a little iffy about serving this dish, but my saving grace is my polenta. It came out really good. As long as Master Eric can pass the burnt fish skin, I know I got this. All right, so Chef Karina, Chef Kevin, you were asked to create a dish that featured the technique of crispy fish skin. At the end of this round, only one of you will advance. So, Chef Karina, what did you make? I prepared for you a summer seared salmon with a sous vis, summer veg composed of asparagus, tomato, and mushroom with a basil oil and a New Mexican chili oil. Skin looks pretty crispy from here. Skin looks very crispy, actually. And unscored. Ah, genius. Thank you. Uh, the skin is crisp up excellently. The flavors are, are, are delicious. Um, the fish is a little overcooked. I noticed a lot of that albumin kind of shooting out. And one of the things for me is about getting that skin crispy while maintaining that. Um, and, and your squash is a little bit under. I can't believe that. I overcooked the fish. It's really embarrassing. I wish it didn't happen. And I hope that the plating and the technique on the fish skin is enough to get me into the third round. And Chef Kevin, what did you prepare? So I made pan-seared blackened salmon, white cheddar polenta with a Creole cream sauce garnished with a little arugula salad, and a maple pancetta drizzle. I was concerned about the cheese with the fish, and I was wrong. Thank you. I think the, the sharpness of the cheddar with the grits works very well. Thank you. The fish is cooked dead on. Nailed it. But the skin has to be crispy and not burnt. You can say blackened all you want. It's burnt. OK. And it's not crispy. You know why it's not crispy? You put a salad on top of it. If I had the opportunity to do it again, I definitely wouldn't put the salad on top. I'd rather perfect fish with burnt but crispy skin than burnt, soggy, perfect. Karina, tell me about your restaurant. What was Blackbird? that experience all about? Yeah. Blackbird's been one of the most amazing experiences of my life. I've been there for about five years, and you know, I'm just at a point where I want to go um, pursue a new dream. You know, sometimes the best thing to do in life is to start all over. Yeah. You know. Kevin, talk to me. Talk about your restaurant. Uh, family owned. My girlfriend's parents came out of retirement with the trust of myself as the chef and. Knock on wood, we're eight and a half years. Right. But now it's time to take Scatories to the next level and say thank you right. to them. Right. You know? Well, I mean, Master Eric, it seems like it's an incredibly tough decision, and it's very close, but only one chef can move forward in the competition. So it's a tale of two cities here. I've got one dish where 
the skin is crisp perfect, the fish is overcooked. I've got one dish where the salmon is cooked perfectly and the skin is burnt and soggy. So it's close. I really need this stuff. And I know I put out good food. So it's not my time to go. The chef that's moving forward. It's great. Thank you, chef. What it came down to, to me, was trainability. I respect your confidence, but you were pretty stout to like, no, here's how I'm doing it, here's how I do it. That's not what I need in a mentee, shall we say. Heard. Sadly, Kevin, that means your time with our master has come to an end. Thank you very much. To get this far and not make it to the opportunity to get this stage with him, now I gotta start from ground zero and hope somebody else out there gives me the opportunity to take it to the next level. Oh, look who's still here. Hi. So, I mean, you're here for a couple of reasons. You have a, a sense of poise about you, and it seems to me that, that you actively seek new knowledge. Well, congratulations, Chef Karina. You're one step closer to the opportunity of a lifetime, the chance to stage with Master Eric Greenspan. But now the challenge becomes really difficult. You have to go up against Master Greenie in the kitchen. Master Eric, you can grab your jacket, and both of you can head to your stations. Good luck, Jeff. Thank you. Being selected a second time by Master Eric feels phenomenal, but this isn't an easy feat. I mean, going up against Master Eric would be like trying to sing with John Lennon, you know? <laughs> like, I'm a big fan of John Lennon, but I never want to sing with him. You ready? Yeah. Do this. All right. Okay, so listen up. The two of you are going to be going head to head in a ferocious battle. And your dishes will be judged in a blind taste test by the one person that even a master struggles to impress, a food critic. Ooh. Our special guest tonight is an esteemed Los Angeles food critic and recently won a James Beard Award for his work in Los Angeles Magazine. Please help me welcome Bill Esparza. I have a lot of respect for Bill. Uh, Bill's a very well-respected person in the Los Angeles food scene. He knows his stuff. Bill, dressed to impress, I love it. Yes. Thank you, Richard, great to be here. As a food critic, I'm constantly on the hunt for new flavors, but I always take a pause for a great delicacy. If this item is on the menu, I gotta have it. So I would love to see your take on foie gras. I love all kinds of liver, but foie gras is the Cadillac of liver. It screams luxury. Chef Karina, this is a dish that could change your life. It can give you a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to stage with master Eric Greenspan. I have some anxieties about making foie gras because I haven't worked with it very much before. If I can beat master Eric in this challenge, it'll prove to him that I should be part of his team. All right, well, Bill, because this is a blind taste test, you cannot hang out with me here, so we will see you at the end of the cook time. Thank you very much, and good luck. You have 30 minutes to create a dish that features foie gras. Your time starts now. Chef, you're gonna have to share that bread with me, okay? No problem. Here you go, mama. Thank you. Traditionally, foie gras goes with fruit, so I'm immediately going to a sweet dish. I'm going to do a creme fraiche ice cream seared foie gras on top of brioche with an apricot sauce and frozen raspberries. I really need to step up my game and do something a little different than uh, the master chef over there, because if I won and I got to work with this guy, it changed my whole life. Uh, master Greenspan. What's up? What are you making there, Hefe? Hot seared foie and a mm. fennel watermelon jam. And then we're gonna do a crispy brioche toast point that we're gonna crisp up in the foie fat once it's done rendering. Interesting, so you're doing some hot foie with brioche and fruit, and guess what, Chef Karina is doing hot foie with brioche and fruit. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I mean, they've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, traditional, right? 
I was expecting maybe a little bit more, to be honest. Don't get disappointed yet. I'm a little disappointed, Chef. I'm about to disappoint you. Oh, that's Woo! the fire I like to hear. <laughs> I'm going to compress these peaches with a little sugar. Compressing fruit really pops out all of the color. At that point, I'll put them in the immersion circulator to soften them up a little bit because they were a touch too hard. My watermelon jam is roasted fennel, and then watermelon, and then sugar, and then a splash of anise liqueur. And that's going to accentuate the anise flavor and the roast on the fennel. It's going to balance out through that sweetness from the watermelon. And I think it's a, it's a good one. Hey, chefs, there's only 22 minutes left. 22 minutes remain. So I grab my creme fraiche. I, I measure out my buttermilk. This is the makings of a creme fraiche ice cream. You're making ice cream? I got to show off. Damn, girl. You know, making savory ice, ice cream. cream? We got hot, cold, juxtaposition. I add sugar, and I get those mixing. Karina has pulled out the nitrogen. It's like the bat signal for me. <laughs> you're like a moth. You can't help it. OK, um, you're going to freeze the ice cream base with the, the liquid, nitrogen. Right. And that's how you're going to freeze it in this time, this short amount of time. Right. OK. Let's hit these raspberries first. OK, so what are you, whoa, whoa, what are you going to do there? Um, I want to smash them and turn them into like little droplets. OK, yeah, that's going to so, work. That looks like enough, right? What do you think? That's, that's going to get good. them. Well, if you want to smash them, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, I probably would go a little good bit luck. more, but I'm Richard Blaze. Um, I got to bust out the big guns. Well, Godspeed. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Wow. Master Eric Greenspan. Hello, sir. Uh, it is just an honor and a pleasure to be in the kitchen with you. Thank you, sir. Um, listen, uh, it looks like Karina is applying a Richard Blaze strategy when all else fails, Freeze. dump it all in liquid. Yeah, yeah. It um, usually works is the thing. <laughs> so, chef, what are you doing with the foie gras? Uh, I'm going to just sear it. Look at that. So you've done this before. I mean, you've worked with the masters of French cuisine. Uh, this is not a new ingredient for you, chef. No, I've used foie gras quite a bit. I'm going to cut out brioche circles. These are going to create a landing pad for our delicious foie gras. My biggest concern about competing with Master Eric is that I don't have a ton of experience cooking foie gras. He has cooked in Europe, and he knows what he's doing. This is my first rodeo. And I take advantage of the, the duck fat by sticking my brioche rounds in there to suck all that fat up and reinforce the flavor of the foie gras. As I'm working my creme fraiche ice cream, I notice that it's freezing up around the sides, and it's giving me. Now available anytime on any device. As I'm working my creme fraiche ice cream, I notice that it's freezing up around the sides, and it's giving me an undesirable texture. Kind frozen treat bars. You'll be like, whoa! The number one ingredient is nuts. They're creamy, delicious, and plant-based. Kind Frozen Treat Bars. Find them in the freezer aisle. The online doctor was a major game changer for me. I literally just signed in. I knew how much I was going to pay for this visit. Immediately was able to speak face to face with a doctor, and they were able to evaluate me and prescribe what I needed to be prescribed. And I was able to go to the pharmacy and pick it up. It, it just, it was so easy, quick, convenient, transparent. I knew exactly what I was getting into. I had a choice. This is what you agree to, and this is what we will provide. Sign me up. That's, that's like, easy. The fried onion strings that really take it over the top. I'm not a raw onion guy. The problem with a lot of vegetables is that they are not fried naturally when they grow out of the ground. Sonic Twisted Texan Cheeseburger or a footlong coney. My mind has been blown yet again.
The creme fraiche ice cream, it didn't turn into ice cream. A nice whip, but not an ice cream. Consistency isn't fantastic, but we might be able to make some magic happen. It's not going to come out um, in an ice cream texture like I want, but I'm hopeful that it'll stand on its own as a whip. I'm just going to keep mixing it and, uh, you know, putting the good vibes in there. A lot of cooking is just vibes. Karina, how you looking? Uh, the ice cream did not turn out, so you're in luck. I'd love for Karina to win, because I'd love to have her in my kitchen. I think she'd be an asset. I think it would be fun to teach her something. But I'm always going to cook the best food that I can cook, because I'm not going to put a plate of something not good in front of somebody. And if I do that, probably got to win. Get played and she have you got a minute. Ah! I pull my bread out of the pan just before it burns, thankfully. Uh, and now it's time to plate. Where I played it safe in round one and two, round three, I did not play it safe. I've never made a creme fraiche ice cream before. I haven't made raspberry droplets before. I haven't cooked foie gras before. So everything on that plate was first time for me. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop cooking, grab your Great plates. Plate. Great plate. <sighs> and bring them over to this table. I've worked so hard to get to where I am today, and now I'm shooting for the moon, and this is a moment to be proud of. Best of luck to both of you. Let's welcome back our esteemed food critic, Bill Esparza. You have foie gras. I do have foie gras, lots. Bill, as you know, this was a blind taste test, so you have no idea which chef made which dish. On the left, this is a pan-seared foie gras, so hot foie gras. It's on a marmalade of watermelon and fennel. It's served with summer fruit, uh, brioche, and garnished with some fennel seed. I like the texture. It's usually presented a lot softer than this, but I, I like the little the sear on the outside. Really wonderful mix of flavors. The, the marmalade and the foie gras is a real classic. I love the added brightness with the fennel. There's some fruit there that isn't quite as present in the, in the dish, but that texture is just really nice, really amazing. It's a good dish, and you can tell. I didn't try to do too much. It's well balanced. I'm not concerned. Over here, the dish to my right, we have a pan-seared foie gras as well. It's on some toasted brioche with an apricot jam, some peaches, raspberry, and some creme fraiche ice cream. This is really nice, too. Lots of sweet on this plate. I love the technique used on the brioche. It's a little different. Excellent cooking on the foie gras. A little bit more of a classic sear. This really has a lot more fruit character to it. The sweet flavors almost overpower the foie gras. But you do get a balance. It's a different presentation, which I also enjoy. I might have a chance here. The creativity was there. The composition was there. Perhaps I win. I don't know. But I got a shot. All right, chefs, while it comes down to this, the big moment. Chef Karina, Master Greenspan has hand-selected you as being the most worthy of potentially staging in one of his restaurants. To work with Master Eric would be a dream come true. That's exactly what I want to do with my life. All right, Bill, well, this is a tough decision. Which dish uh, ultimately is the best? The fennel foie has just amazing foie gras. The, the cooking of the foie gras itself is absolutely outstanding. And the sweet foie gras dish, it's got a wonderful balance. I love the indulging of the sweet flavors. Ultimately, I am choosing. The fennel foie. That's me. Sorry, Chef. Great job. Master Eric Greenspan, good job. Congratulations, Chef. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and congratulations to you. Thank you, you so much. An impeccable job. Chef Karina, you've been a warrior all day long. Thank you so much. I felt like I had a chance at winning, but I missed the mark. I need to go lick my wounds. Chef Karina, unfortunately, you don't win tonight, but you got to the last round. Out of all the chefs today, you were picked as the most likely to stage in Eric Greenspan's restaurant, so congratulations. Thank you so much. Karina made a good impression. You can't teach somebody ethic, and you can't teach somebody poise, and you can't teach them confidence or humility. And she has those. And so that's all she needs. I didn't win, but I got to rub elbows with the stars today, and they were impressed with my work. So I am winning. <laughs>
What does the future hold for me? I don't know, but I am so excited to find out. Awesome, Jeff. Look at that. You're sweaty, too. It happens. Oh, sweaty. Yeah. What happens?